There's lots of spheres, lots of dimensions above there. In fact, I'll draw a line across here at the 21st and the transition between the 21st and the 22nd sphere. So after you become at one with God, you continue learning about God. Why? Because God is infinite. Right? This transition is an interesting transition because here you've got one half of the soul with their spirit form, the other half of the soul with its spirit form, and above there, the two halves of the soul combine, recombine into the one soul. Now, it's only a soul that has got to that stage that can reincarnate. Why? Because at the point of reincarnation, two bodies are created, and if you have a spirit form, you cannot, you cannot perform the process of reincarnation. It's really quite simple. It's one of the laws of our, our God. <clears throat> the soul can only reincarnate or incarnate at any time when it is combined, when it begins in a combined state. It cannot reincarnate in a non-combined state. Does that make sense to everyone? I know it's, it might be out there, right? But that's what actually happens. You, the two halves of the soul recombine, and in that state, they are now completely individualized as a complete unit. So up until that state, they're growing towards each other as well as towards God. Once they get to that state, they have now combined as each other. They have now become one in a, in a real sense. What does it feel like? And What it feels like is that every single experience that person has ever had becomes your experience. And every single experience you've ever had becomes theirs. And you become one person in everything you do. You now don't think of yourself at all as being a separate person to your soulmate. I know it may be hard to conceptualise. about the one who was it, became a female person and the one who became a male person. Yes. And they've got to arrive up there simultaneously or Sorry? Do they, or do they have to arrive up there simultaneously? Uh, they do or, have to make that transition simultaneously, but they don't have to arrive to that point yeah, simultaneously. Yeah. So one's going to get there and wait for the other. And wait for, and help the other to get there too. Usually that's what happens. At that time, the spirit bodies are not needed anymore. The spirit bodies aren't required anymore to experience because the one soul doesn't need any bodies to experience anything. That's what made most sense to me that you can't actually, I mean, besides the unification of the soul halves, also uh, you can't reincarnate before because you still have a spirit body. That's and right. That cannot the, re the spirit body can't push away another spirit body. Right? So you can't incarnate with a spirit body. And I can guarantee to you, every spirit who's above the sixth sphere and in the sixth sphere knows this. Right? So we can talk to them. Yes, thanks. How could you meet your soulmate on Earth? And most of you will meet your soulmate on Earth. Will you know? No, probably not. The reason why is it depends on whether you've dealt with all of your emotional injuries or not, as to whether you will be attracted. Does that make sense to you? You think about it. If I'm an angry man and my soulmate doesn't like angry men, then are we going to be attracted? If my soulmate doesn't like angry men and I'm an angry man, she may even know who I am, right? She may know I'm her soulmate, but she's not going to be attracted to me while I'm angry, is she? I'm going to have to release the anger and get to the state where I'm no longer angry before there'll be an attraction. So have you, have you got to deal with every emotional luggage? When you get to the eighth sphere, you will have dealt with 
every single bit of emotional baggage in your entire existence. How do you do that? It's really simple, actually. What about people? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone doesn't believe me. <laughs> Your emotional baggage at a much faster rate than you could when you create people. Yes. So you've progressed faster than you. And a lot of times, if you meet them, you'll try to assist them. Like, you, like I have met. I have met my soulmate. She has no idea who I am, and and I, she, she can't remember who I am because she's refusing all of her emotions at the moment. So, or a lot of her emotions, I should say. And, and so she, is, she needs some assistance, and I'm trying to give her what assistance I can along with her free will. So it's depending upon whether she wants it. Does that make sense? Yeah. And does that cause you a lot of pain? And being without my soulmate in the past caused me a lot of pain, certainly. But I had to, one of the ways of me progressing was I had to release all of that pain. So it, that took nearly seven years of crying to release my pain about my soul.